Today we'll be showing you the basics of Blender, the greatest 3D production platform, which is also open source and is available for you to download at blender.org. Core Data Motion integrates natively with Blender, so it's a great platform to generate your captures and then export to any third-party system. Before we start though, let me remind you that you can request your Core Data Motion kit from the Kickstarter link that you will find in this video's description down below. The first thing we'll show you is how you can get to this screen so that you can use Core Data Motion's functionalities. In order to have this layout, you'll need to install our add-on, which we covered in a different video that you will see in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. I'll be assuming you have the add-on installed by this point. Let's start a new screen in order to show you how to initiate a new capture session. The first thing we need to do is eliminate the basic elements that Blender adds for us. You can move your mouse pointer to the upper right-hand side and click in order to select. Then hit the X key in your keyboard and select the delete option from the menu that will pop up or simply hit the delete key. As you can see, all the keys I'm pressing will be shown in the lower left side corner of this video. Once all the elements of the scene have been removed, I can go to Window, Core Data and add a mocap avatar. Two things happen after I selected the Add Mocap Avatar option from the menu. The most noticeable one is that a humanoid 3D figure has appeared on the screen. The second one may not be visible to you right now. There is a new workspace called Mocap, which is the one I should head to in order to manage my current scene. This workspace might be hard to access with a small laptop window, such as the one I'm using. But you can click the middle mouse button with the cursor placed on the workspace tabs in order to move your current selection from left to right and backwards. Once your mocap workspace is visible, just click it and you'll be taken to Core Data Motion's layout. It is subdivided in different sections, as you can notice. The main area, which is the one containing your 3D scene, is called the viewport. Then we can find the node area, which is the one we can use in order to configure our capture. Here's the timeline, where we can navigate through our animation's frames. And up here we have the console where we'll be receiving messages sent by Core Data Motion's add-on. The first thing we'll need to learn in order to use Blender is how to navigate in the 3D space. When we say navigate, what we really mean is moving around the viewport's perspective in order to see our scene from different angles. With the middle mouse button, we can select the scene and move in what's referred to as an orbital pattern. If I add the shift key to the middle mouse button, then I'll be moving in a panning pattern. If I scroll the middle mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. These three movements will allow you to move around the 3D scene and get all possible perspectives from your 3D elements. At the beginning you'll find it hard to get used to these movements, but with time and patience this will become as natural as walking. One of the interesting things about Blender is that it's pretty coherent with the way it uses the commands all over the interface. What I mean by this is that if I move to the node area, I can also use the middle mouse button in order to drag the nodes around and navigate this space. I can also zoom the nodes in and out by scrolling with the middle mouse wheel. Another thing I can do is select a node and remove it with the delete key, just like I did with all the 3D elements in my original scene. We'll now run a demo capture. We'll work this way because currently I have no sensors linked to my computer. This will start streaming a pre-recorded capture we've generated for you. As we run this demo, we can notice how the data from the stream is affecting the 3D image. This happens thanks to the node structure that the add-on had pre-built. We can navigate the 3D space and apply all the commands we've reviewed while the capture is being generated. A nice feature we have is the possibility of registering your capture. In order to do this, we'll need to add a new node.
you can surely use the add menu in your node module. But within Blender we also have a shortcut we can use, which is Shift A. We'll then be adding a record node, which will connect to the armature output by linking the armature out dot from the armature node and the armature in dot from the record node. As you may have noticed, all of these operations can be performed as the capture process is running. If you ever run into any bugs or issues while performing this type of operation, feel free to leave an issue report in the GitLab repo you'll find linked in the description. Now that we're receiving the demo capture data, we can start recording by hitting the record button. You'll see that your timeline counter starts moving after you do this. You can zoom in and out of the timeline by scrolling in and out with the middle mouse wheel, just like we did with the rest of the work areas. Additionally, as you may imagine by now, we can click the middle mouse button and drag in order to move around the timeline. This is the consistent pattern that I referred to earlier. I'll now stop the recording. What has happened in the background is that a new action has been created with Blender. An action is a data block that allows the program to store movement data. I'll now stop the demo node in order to avoid the distraction. If I now zoom into the record node, you'll see that I can play the recording I've just generated. This movement is an action registered within a file inside Blender. If I wanted to simply save this action in order to use it later on, I can go to the file menu and hit the save or simply use the Ctrl plus S shortcut. This will generate a .blend file within which the action will be saved. Now, how can we review and modify this action? I'll pause the replay so that we can properly review the timeline. As you can see, here we can find different buttons that help us navigate through the animation. This play button works exactly the same way as the one found in the record node. I can also pause it. As you can notice while I play the capture, even if the recording was longer, the playback limits itself to the default area predefined by Blender. This can easily be changed by scrolling around the end keyframe count that you will find in the upper left hand side of the playback menu. With this we've covered the basics of Blender navigation. That's how easy it is to generate your captures with Blender. I'll see you in our next video.